Welcome to Drinks World, where we celebrate entrepreneurs in the beverage industry. Today's guest is Sean Gatenby. Sean started his career in the banking and finance world in London before he found his niche at Process Sales, a division of Imana Foods. Sean now heads up the sales and merchandising business responsible for spa house brands. In this episode, Sean takes us behind the scenes of this 10-year-old business. My name is Holger Meyer, and this is Drinks World. Today we are visiting Sean Gatenby at his offices in La Lucia, overlooking the beautiful Umklanga coast. Sean is the managing director of Spa Engage. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thanks, Holger. Great to have you here. And Sean and I were at Varsity together in right. Marisburg. And Sean, what did you study there? I did my BAC and then I did articles back in Durban at a, at a, a firm called Kessel Feinstein, uh, who then became Grant Thornton. Um, passed my board exam on a third attempt for auditing, strangely, but uh, anyway, I managed to get through it. <laughs> uh, and uh, got qualified in 1997. Um, and then went overseas to, to London, where I worked in, in, in the bank finance type of area for, for a couple of years in, in, in London. Uh, got married, Claire and I went across uh, and uh, spent a further couple of years in, in, in London. It was great, managed to travel a lot, managed to uh, learn a lot. Uh, we learned that I wasn't keen on living in a place like London where it was cold, wet and damp for, for, for forever. And missed South Africa and missed Durban and also worked out that wasn't that keen to bring up kids in that area and also that um, banking and finance wasn't really for me. So okay. with that in mind, um, when I was auditing, there was an Australian firm, a guy I got in quite well with, a guy Steve Johnson, and he headed up a business called, it was a strapping business called RWD Strapping, and they had a, a commercial interest in a business in South Africa, which was headed in Durban, and they had a gap for a general manager to come in there. So I got hold of him and uh, we were sort of old, old golf buddies and uh, enjoyed a, a beer and a glass of wine together and got on really well and he was happy to have me back to sort of help him out there which which I, which I did and uh, well gladly took uh, being keen to get back to live in Durban and, and have a, a commercial role as opposed to a, a finance role. Um, yeah, so got into that, um, travelled across to Australia a couple of times, also worked out that it wasn't really where I wanted to be. I was happy to, rather far happier being in Durban and uh, enjoying living here, enjoying um, the commercial parts of the business. So yeah, I learnt a lot there. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it, it just seems like there's, there is always a, a job in Durban if you really look for it. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah rather that than having, I mean, rather live in Durban than, than, than with the weather and the view you have here, as, as you said. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think I'm a big believer that uh, Durban has got a lot to offer, and especially on the commercial side, there's a lot of scope and growth. Um, yeah, so I learned a lot to, with with that business, uh, and then I was approached by um, uh, one of uh, a friend of ours uh, who works in this in the recruitment industry, um, Julian Schlemmer. Uh, he had a position going at um, Amana Foods. And it was a bit of a change, but the role was more into the FMCG area, um, and it certainly interested me. And the Australian business at that stage was either going to exit back to Australia or, or sell. So the timing worked out quite well for me to make the move to, to Amana Foods. Um, and Amana is, a, I mean, they're very successful um, mm. pine town based business. Correct, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, fantastic business. Great culture, great leader, and a guy called Paul, Paul Olcock, who, yeah. who really... Um, Kind of mentored me quite a lot, pushed me quite hard, but uh, I learned a hell of a lot from him. And he uh, still owns a business. Mm, he does, yeah. yeah. A guy, uh, Paul Alcock, he was really good to us. Yeah, um, I started off in a trade marketing type position for a brand called Top Class, which was within the minor stable, and then um, moved into a trade marketing director position after about a couple of years. And yeah, he, he grew a nice young team and um, worked with him and a guy, Justice and Kamishi. Uh, he was the sales director and he's also still there yeah eh? justice yeah. is still there still see justice still share odd honeycomb with him every now and again and uh yeah, he's a good guy uh and and the great business great values um very much uh, into the community uh, i mean the, the minor brand does have its sort of uh heart and soul in the kzn and trans guy sort of community okay. it's very very strong there um a lot of strong trade marketing uh presence they a lot of tastings and demos so there was faith and trust in the product uh, and um, oh, great business great great values I uh, learned a lot 
what happened in the group, it's called the Quadrant Group. You had a miner, you had uh, a business called um, IT Dynamics, which did the f- systems and stuff. Then there's a business called Synergistics that did the um, distribution, w- w- the sort of walls and wheels of the warehousing. Um, and, and and then they own two agency type businesses, which will get you onto where I am now, in a way. Um, one is called Fairlane, based in Johannesburg, and it dealt with largely the independent trade. And then a business called Process Sales. Um, and the guy, who, who headed that up, Chris Phillips, he moved on and Paul sort of moved me across into that as an MD role, which was a great progression as well. Um, and yeah, that was my first sort of starting in where I am now, which is the sales and merchandising business. And uh, what year was that? It was in 2007. Yeah, okay. so about there, yeah. So about three years of running, of running that business. Great, exciting stuff. Obviously, dealing with a lot of independent trade. In case then you've got the likes of IBC, which is your independent buying group, large, big, big retail, big wholesalers who who who, 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 who did deals and traded with. Uh, the wholesalers generally were still quite strong in those days. Um, CBW, the mass cash group. Um, yeah, so we had a big team with that. And my first start then of, of running a, a large number of merchandising staff and uh, and um, salespeople. Um, and you were merchandising the Imana <coughs> range. Yeah, and then obviously where those agency businesses, and particularly in those days, had is they had, you had to leverage your 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 footprint. So you have got a number of people, call you a number of stores, and the best way to leverage is to have more than one product to sell. So okay. Imana was a, a good, call it um, strong brand to have in, in the basket, but we had a number of other principles as well. You paid us a commission, and that's okay. that's how you you built a business, but. Towards 2010, um, the biz- the industry started changing quite rapidly. I think there was a lot of consolidation. So you started having national agencies looking after brands, um, specializations into channels. So some people just doing retail channel or, or, or wholesale channels. And I think a lot has changed and, and it changed quite rapidly at, at that time. Um, that perhaps brings us to where I am today. And that story started about 10 years ago, uh, 20, end of 2011. So Bruce Hughes, who heads up um, those days, was Monteagle Africa. He was a old school friend of my brother's, Jamie, and also I knew Bruce as well. I knew the family quite well. Bruce's dad, Peter Hughes, was the MD of, of Spa, and Bruce had set mm-hmm. up a very successful independent business supplying private label into a number of channels like Rhino, Shop on Checkers, and Spa. But Spa was increasingly becoming the, the cornerstone of, of their business. Um, so their business was called Montego Africa, shareholded by the Marshall family and then and Bruce himself and the guy Anthony Dumas and, and they they ran that Montego um, business very successfully and it grew. At the same time, there was a massive growth in the private label space. So private label brands, with the trend was strong overseas, started becoming more compelling here. And um, there's a guy Graham Clarkson who headed up the spa brand uh, business or, or unit in in spa itself, and uh, and they worked closely with Bruce and his team. So they started building uh, this business rapidly, and it grew from you know uh, small numbers to significant numbers and share from quite tiny share into into, into big share. Uh, with with the offering that the spa brand was as good as the best for less, but it was more about not just a you know a cheap and nasty. It was a, a well packaged product, uh, priced well. With, with, with great quality offering uh, and, and with that they had a lot of success um, but the challenge from a sales and merchandising point of view is that most agencies around the country would normally have a, a branded biz, a branded product and then private label would be secondary so the, the thought that they had which I found quite intriguing at the time was to flip that on its head and say let's have an, an agency business that just does private label mm-hmm. uh, which is exactly the contrary to what everyone else would do and then as opposed to let's use an example like Aquila Water would be the brand and Spa Water would be the secondary. In this instance, we took Aquila out of the equation and just had Spa Brand Water. And then we added all the Spa Brand products into the equation and said, well, if we had that offering and we built a sales and merchandising business around that, uh, that would do a number of things. It would um, it would give it focus. We'd need to have a national footprint. we need to be dedicated to one channel being Spa. And we would need to, um, you know, we'd, we, we, we would... Given the spa group in particular, with the with the retailer owned scenario, you, you know you need to offer a compelling offering to the the retailer. He needs to see it as as value, but because he's got the ability to buy a voluntary trade, you, you still need the service. So mm. 
all that whole thing came in. So Martin Pockton, when they had, had a beer with me towards the end of 2011 uh, and, and pitched it to me, I, I jumped at the opportunity just seeing where the industry had changed with a bit of the background I'd had and, and seeing that that was a really compelling offering in particular being dedicated to one channel which means you could do that to distraction. You get to know SPA intimately. You know exactly how it works. You wouldn't have to worry about other retail channels. You could be exclusive there. You could develop your people around understanding the channel. And uh, and that, that, that was the um, the start of it, really. Yeah, from 2012, I, we, we joined, so we're coming up to our 10-year next year, which is quite something, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the SPA, the group, because it's all independently owned, mm-hmm. they, I mean, the retailers are essentially your, Correct. your customer. Absolutely. And... Uh, I mean, there's there's healthy and sometimes unhealthy sure. uh, friction between the two, between D- DC or Correct. or spa head office and the, and the retailer. Yeah. But uh, your job is then to to kind of manage it. Yeah, as best we can. Look, and hold your spot on there. There's a to me, I've always seen that as a healthy tension, mm. and and I, and, I, and I love the fact that you have a, um, a, a, a sort of owner managed scenario. So he's the entrepreneur. You know, he's running his business. So if you're going to be selling him something, it best to make sure it mm. offers him value. Uh, we try to get that right as best we can and the service <laughs> we're giving is, is spot on uh, so that healthy tension I think is an, an important one because um, you know whilst it has challenges it also creates opportunities yeah. you know so I, I think compared to the other corporate channels where, which have their own models and work for them our, ours is one which is based on that um, healthy tension which drives a commercial offering drives the um, you know obviously we've got some strong groups in case then in particular you've got like uh, Ulrich Kaiser who was also married to Varsity That's, he's done really well he's got a handful of stores but they've got a number of stores that means they've got critical mass and, 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 and then you've got smaller type of offering stores I'm not trying to single people out it's more just the dynamic of it which, mm. you, which you've alluded to there is definitely um, and that's a different dynamic again if you own 20 stores correct. versus the guy that owns a quick spot 100% I know that <laughs> quite well my brother and I own a little quick spot and we, we small and small fry compared to the rest but it uh, helps me understand what the retailers need and, and yeah. it's been quite good so going back to 2012 when we pitched the idea uh, over a, uh, Bruce suggested I go have a, a couple of hunters while I enjoy my turkey and think about it because it would mean I'd have to leave Amano and process sales which I, which was a uh, pulled the heartstrings a bit because I really did love the business and enjoyed mm. the family um, owned business environment that, that Paul offered and, 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 and did for us um, but I definitely saw it as the right opportunity for, for me at the time so it was, I was employee number one in January 2012 uh, I just turned 40 then so it was 10 years ago and um, we are we um, we then set off and we said how are we going to get a national footprint so we went to Joburg initially and we and we, we dealt with a business called PSG that owned two businesses one was called Frontline one was called Ansel and they were shareholders there we when Teagle then became the acquisition partner to buy out the share and split the businesses in half so the one business went to Branded using the Aquila water example they took Aquila okay. and then the one Teagle merchandising services as we called ourselves then became the business that did only private label, which everyone thought we were crazy. How could you possibly build a business around just private mm-hmm. label, just spa brands? Uh, and obviously then we need, need to also go and approach a whole lot of principals that also, and there Graham Clarkson came into, into, into the equation. He helped out saying, well, this has become a dedicated model. Like everything a spa is voluntary, but it's you need to make it compelling. So, so we had to, um, and the, the way to do that was to A, build a structure actually. So we bought the business in Joburg, which looked after South Rand and North Rand and Lofelt centralized in Joburg um, a leader Peterson headed up that area to start with uh, and then we went to Cape Town it was a business called Plantation Group a guy Johannes Pina and we um, we bought that business in its entirety and kept Johannes on as we did with the in- inland business which was it was bought 100% um, so then we had three we had four DCs now running round about that was by mid 2012 um, KZN really had a business called SMS, a guy Carl Van Veek, who, who was a retailer and also understood Spark quite well. So we went into a, a JB with him and we had to split the businesses between private label and and, and branded mm-hmm. business. Um, Eastern Cape, slight anomaly in that um, we still are a shareholder with, with, with Gail Henderson Marketing, but she's a doyen of the Eastern Cape. Her dad, Trippy Henderson, ran Eastern Cape DC, basically. He was he was a sort of pioneer in that, in that regard and Gail's been fantastic for us. So that was quite an easy fit in that her business really was just doing spa brands anyway, 99%. So her model was, was spot on with ours and been a great partner um, for us. Um, so within a year, we'd managed to buy or acquire or or, uh, or create a national footprint just doing spa, 
just doing spa brands, not making a lot of money in those days, but but certainly um, the vision was starting to come into, into place. Um, our, our major backing brands were out of Montego, Africa, who was a partner, and the other, other partner was PSG at the time. Um, and why I'd worked for Montego, Africa, or for Bruce and, and Anthony at the time, was that they now had a dedicated business running where they were, called the sort of, the major contributor to the basket. So they still contribute at least 50% of our, at that stage, actually a lot more to our revenue. Uh, but they were getting the focus. They were getting mm. a dedicated team. They were um, not without any tension and, 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 and challenges. It always always will be. And every day in retail, we have that. So that's 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 natural. But we were able to provide more solutions now because we were we were dedicated and, and focused. Um, so as... as as we grew that, we also needed to grow our revenue. So we had to go to the likes of Woodlands Foods, who have uh, also been with us since the early days, uh, Tinas, Tinas Pretorius, who, who, who partnered with us, fortunately. And, and that's the UHT milk, which is a big mm-hmm. a, a big skew, as I'm sure every household will know. They keep that in their pantry. And um, we got them on board. Then we had to go to across all, all, all the suppliers. So we've probably got now, from those days, end of 2012, 2013, maybe we had... 15 principles we now got about 60 okay that look after spa brands that now use us but you know, i'm always the, the belief that if someone's going to join us we need to add value back and whilst we're not perfect we're certainly going to try our best to, to sort things out and and have a team similarly we also need to grow a number of people we would have had you know a handful of reps and merchandisers in the early days and that's had to grow a lot along as as we built the business and as we as we as, as we built as we built um the sales and so forth um so certainly the first two or three years was was quite was a real challenge and a struggle just because trying to get this vision on board. But it started to go get a bit of a, a bit of momentum and, and critical mass and started to produce some results and started to make a bit of a profit and started to, to, to the model started to come into play. And at that point in time, that private equity partner, PSG, were also going in their own path in a way in that they were more branded business. They bought a business logic code Swaziland and they had a whole lot of branded stuff. So there was definitely a bit of a, uh, an amicable parting of ways. So Wayne Hook was the CEO of Spa at the time, and we had to determine Spa then bought that share out, which made complete sense because you've now got the partner invested into a business mm. that's dedicated to looking after the retailers, as you suggested earlier, Holger. It's all about the retailer looking after him, and that's where we play. But now with Spa owning and having a vested interest, it, it gave us a, a, a real um, ability to to continue to drive that agenda so yeah that's and that I mean that relationship then became different I guess yeah and, and they've been great partners they, they haven't got involved uh, in an uh, in a um, they've seen us as entrepreneur business entrepreneurial business okay. as well so you'll see even our offices as much as we part of spa we still believe that we have our own identity and we mm. want to be entrepreneurial we want to grow and develop our people and it's about it's about that and it's not necessarily just about um, um we spa fairly corporate for, 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 for obvious reasons. They're they're a big business, so yeah. they, they, we, we, we they've allowed us to continue that entrepreneurial type of um, um, approach, which has been good uh, and and been, been good partners. So the relationship changed mainly positively, uh, and, um, and and then I'll sort of elaborate on a few of the other developments as we go along. Mm. So the, do you cover the areas where the DC co- covers. So I mean, I believe the DC goes into let's say Namibia. Correct. So you cover those areas? Spot on, and Botswana. Okay. So they, to sort of clarify those, Holger from Western Cape, and they look after Namibia. Yeah. So our Western Cape team have got a team of sales and merchandising guys based in Vintok. We probably got a team of about close to 20 there now, geographically okay. spread out, obviously, but uh, but you need people in country to, to understand the culture and, mm. and understand the retailers as well. Um, so again, those products will come out of the Western Cape DC and to into Bintuk, Wolfers Bay, Swako um, okay. uh, up north. Similar for Botswana, we that comes from the North Rand um, DC. They and they deliver there. And they oh. deliver there. You, there you've got a guy, Franz Juster, who owns the majority of the stores and then and, and the Vensel Group own a handful of stores as well. So we've got an in-country team uh, there as well. Those areas have still got scope to grow further because we have got cross-border challenges. Mm. Uh, and, and, and as the sales grow, our resources can grow as well. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, a little bit of stuff in Swaziland and in Mozambique out of low felt as well. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. A few handful of stores, maybe 15 in, 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 in Swaziland. Mozambique, a lot of it depending on trade and cross-border opportunities, but there are some stores okay. in Mozambique as well. Um, yeah, and we, we divide our business the same way. So our KZN team looks after the, the KZN distribution center, deals with their, 
their the exec team, their marketing team, their retail ops team, um, and we covered the stores the same. So we remodeled that our reps would call from Cozy Bay through Tantata to Newcastle, and we divide ourselves up much, much the same way. So. And, and just like spy your head office is also here yeah Durban as I said from day one <laughs> when we moved back it wasn't going to change uh, luckily it's still in Durban um, and we have got offices around the country yeah, set yeah. up the same way and to find, jump on a plane rather than and, and live here so all good yeah. okay so your business doesn't get involved in the sourcing now yeah just, just more the implementing that's a good question Holger yeah and I think a lot of confusion happens yeah. around that so maybe that'll actually that question can take us to where the next developments happened within the group um so, when Teagle Africa, Bruce and Anthony had built a fantastic business around sourcing and, 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 and yeah. getting product, whether they had to go to Argentina to source um, UHT milk or, or Poland to get uh, frozen veg or whatever it is, they, they would either source internationally or locally. Always with a bias towards local because that was the sort of, thing, the sort of uh, value we look for. Um, but there was two businesses there, Montegal Africa that did the international procuring and then Montegal Africa that did the local procuring. Um, so their route to market, or if we talk about a supply chain, they would they would source a product, which means deal with a, a cherry farmer in Fixburg whose main business was farming cherries, not dealing with DCs. Mm. And they would go and provide the packaging, give them um, a demand forecast, procure the product from the, the cherry farmer and then supply it to the six distribution centers. Similarly, they might also partner with businesses like Road Food, Road's Foods, who have their own brand but wanted to supply baked beans under the private label but under a different vendor, which would have been Montegal Africa okay. in those days. So, so they're the vendor, not Road's Food? Yeah, they're the vendor, correct. Mm. So the, that vendoring business grew significantly, um, and um, Montegal Africa then had a, probably pr- close to 100 vendors. And a lot of where I thought they had a lot of value, where maybe people didn't understand it so much, is that they managed to to look after the supply chain for the retailer. So took that tassel off their back. They would make sure that some of those businesses, if you can put into perspective, had kind of a cash flow issue. So they bankrolled a lot of the businesses. They'd made sure that they would pay it up front and to secure. If you're not, mm. food security is something people don't really fully appreciate in this country and, and how fragile it is. So, so I think they played a massive role in making sure those smaller sec- second and third tier suppliers were paid, were able to produce uh, and offer the private label offering, which was still quality, had all the compliance in place, had all the packaging in place. So um, played a huge role in, 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 in getting that right and and, and and took it very seriously and, and, as, and as, as you should. Um, so the vendoring and the procuring and the sourcing was, was done by Montiel Africa and, and International. And they also had a team of key account guys that would deal with the DCs, put trade trading deals in place, put promotions in place help us activate um, the brand and store. You needed to treat spa brands like a brand. Mm. If you're going to be in the cereal category and you're up against um, Kellogg's Corn Flakes and you've got a spa brand Corn Flakes, you need to activate it. You need to treat it like a brand. Um, and we did a lot of that. And our teams worked together in conjunction, with, not with arts challenges, but certainly with a lot of um, opportunities and successes as well to grow those categories uh, within, within, within spa. Um, but to, to take it to... The next steps in the group and the developments that happened there is um, what, what the shareholders want Teagle then look to sell out, or Montegal as, as a shareholder looked to sell out out of the, um, the business, and Spa then took their share over. And that's where um, Bruce's, Bruce, Bruce's business now changed from Montegal Africa to, to Spa Encore, or Encore as it's known, own brand, own identity. Again, a great move because it's a dedicated business to look after Spa, look after its private label from, from gate to plate or from farm mm. to fork whatever you want to call it and they and they, and they, and they manage that and, and, we, and we being an, a, a wholly owned business by Encore well not wholly owned, owned by Spa and Encore essentially 75% owned by Spa now but the same thing offering a sustainable solution in store that, that looks after looks after the, um, the retailer ultimately and um, that's been a growth yeah mm. so I mean I've seen I've noticed in my shopping basket mm. that there's more and more spa yeah. labels in my basket, Good. and uh, that sometimes the packaging is superior to yeah. to the branded stuff, yeah. Good especially point. those. Uh, I don't know what you call those. It's called Illa Pack, yeah. It's, 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 those it's beautiful, lovely packs. packaging, yeah, for sure. Um, spot on. 
where where you're starting and sometimes it's even more expensive than True. than the than the branded stuff and but still you prefer to take that 100 percent. so the whole idea behind spa brand yeah. wasn't necessarily about being cheap and nasty and, yeah. and, a, and a no-name brand it was yeah. meant to be a brand the packaging was well thought out for the consumer added value back to the consumer because that kind of packaging you're talking about yellow pack you can put multiple things and we i think we've had rice in there yes. we've had uh, all at least with that packaging you could still keep it locked away and 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 and, and stored fresh which was really value yeah. ultimately at the end of the day so the business also started an entity called uh, Montpac in those days uh, and is now uh, with with Montegal being bought out as, 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 as part of the Encore packaging group and they equally like we do look after retailers uh, the packaging part of the business looks after the suppliers and helps will buy on volume on their behalf on print runs okay. so you, the economies of scale start coming into play mm. I think that ultimately is always trying to drive value back to the retailer because we've got to make sure we're being responsible to the retailer we make sure we're giving him the right product the right product that his consumer can buy if the retailer is successful we can be successful mm. we, know, we know they have their challenges I know first hand now so there, there is um, there is value that needs to be thought out and I'm a big believer in responsible let's, have, let's be responsible to the retailer if we're going to give them a product and a lot of what we do is engage we work on right range products so we might have um, 2,000 SKUs but our sales guys need to understand that certain products I don't know where do you, you shop you live in Hillcrest what's your what spa would you shop at oh, yeah. Clue Clue okay. <laughs> Clue May time and in the quick spas as well do you, or do you any, any, any clue yeah Hillcrest quick spa yeah. exactly so Hillcrest quick spa say versus the Clue Super Spa there's different ranges yeah. that apply and our reps need to go in there when they're selling while sales guys need to go when they're selling and they need to understand what the retailers um, a quick spa format can only take so many yeah. products so, and it has so much range so to be responsible to retailer we really work hard on the range really want to make sure we're putting a product that will sell for him uh, and, and adds value so glad you, you're saying you're putting more and more spa brands in your product that means like they're stocking it correctly and, and you're getting value um, yeah, so I think the, the journey's taken us a, a, a long way and, and we're on core now being owned by spa is starting to really add value back and their responsibility to look after that supply chain is, is, is key and our responsibility to look after retail is also important so it's come a long way um from the engaged business now, what it's allowed us to do, though, is, is to say, well, okay, we, we've got the cornerstone of the business being the spa brands, which we look after, and that, yeah. that, that adds value back to DC and adds value to retail and hopefully consumer. But we also saw an opportunity to to create two additional uh, divisions, um, which we're going to launch in the new year but a bit more formally, because we ultimately sell our people as opposed to a product which looks after the products. Um, so the one area that had had scope or had um, 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 definitely an opportunity we, we saw was Tops, and us being close to all the stores and Tops being cl- closely located. Um, with the help of Mark Robinson and the guy Clint Nicholson who joined us, who had a lot of Tops experience. Um, we, we, we delved into the top space with DC um, supplied suppliers or DC housed suppliers, okay. the likes of Distel, Heineken, uh, Pernod Ricard, um, and, and a few others that we kicked off with. And there, there we're focusing primarily on, on on flow and merchandising and categories and, 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 and shelf availability. A lot of the, those companies still have their own sales reps, but we work hand, hand in hand with them to make sure that... that, 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 that and it was an area that was wasn't really being um, was being ignored I guess largely I think a lot of guys went you know they could sell into tops but they weren't necessarily looking after the shelf part of it and and, and we've actively got involved partnering with Spa and with the Catman team a bit more to get to, to get that flow right to make sure that the housewife who's shopping can find her, her products easily because that's yeah. typically the, the market we're talking about uh, and um, that's been going for about three years now um, okay. Yeah, adding huge value, and 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 will continue to add value uh, as as we grow. One of the areas we're looking at to in the new year is the wine category. Just tidying that up, making it a bit easier for for the consumer uh, to identify with branded lines, private labels plays a smaller role, and even your local people. I think spa must continue to support local wherever possible. You know, you and, and I think that's part of the success of the model. Yeah. You know, so we don't want to be too prescriptive. We want to be able to give a general. Um, oh, I think the right thing is to give some leadership as to what's required but ultimately still leave a little bit of um, support for the local people who live important those local if you take guys in Stellenbosch you've got their consumers and they've got wine growers and planters around them they they are simply need to find their products in the, in the tops as well so yeah. I, I think that's uh, I like that that you call it leadership rather than dictatorship yeah exactly. <laughs> 
that's the right way to do it. I think in the spa model, it's all about that persuasive for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that's, okay. that's, that's key to it. So Tops has had its challenges this last year. I mean, we've um, we, we employ now currently our total business is employing over a thousand two hundred people, and within the top space about three or four hundred some of it's shared with the, with the retail stores because it makes sense okay. some of it's dedicated just depending on on, on, on the arrangements um, and with lockdown and with um, you know some periods where tops were closed entirely you know we had some tough decisions do we can we keep our people on board or or do we put them on short time or do we retrench for a period of time I mean obviously it has an impact on profit because our revenue dried up completely but we still had our people and our costs and I think that's where yeah, we had some tough decisions to face, and 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 fortunately, with the shareholders and partners we have in the business, we we, we took people first as opposed to profit, and mm. we managed to keep everyone employed. No one was on short term. No one had any any no retrenchments, and yeah, we must have lost close to over ninety days worth of trade, I guess, over that eighteen month period. And then we still no no one lost any pay whatsoever. Yeah. So something we're very proud of, and that, that we've put people first and managed to, and hopefully that continues. Well, hopefully things just stay open and <laughs> then it'll be fine. Uh, so, yeah. It might just stay open for, for this season, eh? Yeah, we hope, we so. hope so. We hope so. But look, those things are out of our control. What we can control is, is, is the decisions we make. And, and yeah. um, it's also taken us along an interesting journey, which is, we've done with our, our, our team over this last year, just about cementing our values and what we stand for as, 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 as a business. And we've looked at it quite internally as a management team or a leadership team with the help of a lady, Sarah, who works with a company called Apple Tree. She's done some work with the leadership and coaching and culture and and we felt we needed to develop our own culture and our own identity because you know we've shifted this business a lot from what was a sales and merchandising business uh, old agency sort of mentality where you're normally the bottom of the chain and getting cucked on the whole time too yeah. let us take let us give leadership but we need to give leadership to our people first so with our management team and being geographically spread you know businesses in Cape Town and and null spread and and what have you we got we got Quite a diverse culture, but we wanted to embrace that, and 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 but still have some identity. So we went, we we, we went on the lines of, of of building some values, and often you know writing on the wall means something, but it needs to be entrenched in people. But it needs to start with that. So our values are around uh, engage with purpose, um, lead with passion, and grow with our partners. So that those are three kind of payoff lines as our values, which we we feel resonate to a our team, our people, and and hopefully our, our partners. Uh, if we can grow our partners and. They grow and, and we grow, uh, and that's that's really the mindset we wanted to create. Yeah, wow, that's that's really um, it takes us behind the scenes where where you don't really get to have a look um, and and even understand half the time that that all this big structure exists there. Sure, yeah. Um, you pick up your product on the shelf at your your <laughs> spa, you don't realize what goes on behind the yeah. scenes. I guess, yeah. Yeah, very very interesting. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Um, and now for the future. Yeah, the next division, which we, which because I said there were three. So we had mm-hmm. the, the retail division. We've had the, the top one, which is gone, and the one that we're really excited about in the new year, which will be our our third leg, uh, is is the fresh team. Um, okay. So if you think about spa, each store's got great. You know, home meal replacement offering or fresh deli offerings and some do better than others uh, but no doubt it's, it's it's an important area that needs to um that, that the retailers need help with as well from a solution point of view concept point of view it's an area that, that retailers make profit but also face things like wastage and shrinkage um, so we're looking to put in a dedicated um, team called uh, engage fresh which we've really got by and large because we do a lot of back of house product which is the food services or food solutions type of thing but we wanted to and we'll launch it in the new year so I can't give away too much yet just to say that it's coming and it is, is exciting space uh, for us it, it, it does give us an identity and um, it, we've still got our team that looks after retail we've still got our team that looks after tops and we'll have our team that looks after the, the fresh space uh, which will be butchery bakery uh, produce food solutions uh, deli all those type of exciting mm-hmm. things so yeah excited about the future I must say yeah but I mean there's already been changed because you can see as you walk into the newer mm. spas you can recognize there's a there's a pattern and there's a strategy behind sure. that exactly is exactly. that again your leadership yeah and spas I mean spa recognize that as well and I, th- I think ultimately leadership to to retailers is, is, is about making sure you're responsible to them mm. first which means can, can we can we give some direction and concepts and as you say you really picked it up looking into the, into, mm. into the stores there's still a lot of work to be done there um and a lot of good work that is really happening, uh, but an exciting space, and, and I think something that um, everyone can benefit from. Hopefully, the consumers are ultimately be getting fresh product that they can find readily available, that's appropriate to to, to their markets or, or the consumers. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so yeah, exciting year ahead. As you, as you say, you've just walked into our offices, we've just redone them with our values everywhere. And uh, yeah, all, all new and ready to roll. So we we, we fresh for, for a new start, new year, and looking for an exciting one. Yeah. And uh, a little bit about the, the, the store that you've invested yeah. in? Good, 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 good question. I'll take you to it now for your time, hopefully. Um, so my brother, Jamie, he's worked for Spa for about 20 years. He worked at Spa Northrand and then Southrand okay. in Joburg. So they lived in Joburg for a number of years um, in the retail operations side. Uh, so he's a lot of Spa experience, a lot of, and he was at a retail director level, so exec level for both those DCs. Then he got an opportunity to go across to Sri Lanka with his family to open up Spa Sri Lanka which he did in around about 2015, 2016, I think it was. Um, yeah, I did a great job, great adventure for them as a family and started Spa Sri Lanka. Really. <laughs> I went to visit a few times and enjoyed the beaches and the and the, the curries and the beer. So it's a good, good place to visit. If anyone gets a chance, it's well worth the visit. Um, yeah, and he did, he did a great job putting the foundations in place for, 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 for Spa Sri Lanka. And he was seconded there for about three or four years and then came back to KZN like all of us being Gates and Bees, having our roots in Durban, so come back home, which is cool. Uh, and we joined the DC again, and then, then we were looking actively for, he, he was quite keen to get into a store himself. Okay. So um, Carl van Vecht, the very same guy we were involved with SMS a few years ago, he bought Spa Port Shepson, uh, looking for a, a, a bigger store, moving to a super spa, so he bought Harbour View, uh, and this uh, Ridge Quick Spa came in the market. Um, so Jamie's a major shareholder. I'm a, I'm a minor shareholder just as, as an interest. I'm not operationally involved. I've got a lot of other stuff to look after here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've had it just over a year. Yeah, lots of learnings. I think the insights for me have been great that it's given me a bit more insight into what retailers really do yeah. need, even albeit on a smaller scale, but still understanding things like cash flow, range, support, promotion, all these all these good things. Cash yeah. flow, <laughs> the biggest one we've been <laughs> uh, And yeah, we're just revamping our tops, which uh, which hopefully will come online shortly. And uh, Center's looking good. Jamie's wife, Sally, has now got involved in the business and she's doing great things there. So okay. yeah, a real, real sort of good spa family story there. And we're hoping, hoping for, for more success with it. Uh, yeah, so it's given me some great insights and also looking forward to a good year for Jamie and Sally ahead. And, and, and my involvement will be mainly support and yeah. their interest too. Okay, well, thank you. It's 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 certainly fascinating and gives me an insight. I mean, we've I've worked with with so many top stores over the last sure. nearly thirty years, and uh, it just gives us a completely different picture from from your view. Pleasure, thank you, yeah, thank you thank for you. that. Pleasure. That was Sean Gatenby. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for listening to our stories here online. In the show notes, you will also find a link where you can subscribe to become part of our community and be notified when we upload our latest content.